Let's solve all the tasks in problem set one. I've loaded our data file, Stockton 3. First is to run a regression with dependent variable S price. So I highlight that first and then the list of all the other variables, beds, baths, live area and age. Right mouse click, open as equation and press OK and here's our regression output. It has a constant of 23815.02 as we said it uh, should have So the next task is to perform an f-test that tests the restriction that beds and bars variables are irrelevant in the above model. So what we need is the restricted sum of squares from the unrestricted model, which is this one. Okay, and actually what we're going to do is we're going to call this task1 underscore u for unrestricted. So we have that equation always handy. You can see it appear here. And now we want an alternative and that's the restricted one. So we want to estimate the same model without beds and baths. So it's S price, um, live area and age as explanatory variables. So I open this equation and press OK. So here's our restricted model and we need the sum of squared residuals from here. So save that output as well. So what we'll do is we'll first do all the EVs work and then we'll do some calculations afterwards. Task 1.4, perform F test that tests the restrictions that live area baths and age variables are irrelevant. So the variables we now want is really only the beds variable. Okay, so we we'll just change that to beds. So we press OK and here's our new restricted model. We need that for task 1.4. Save that output as well. I'll do that in the background and we'll get back to that. So next is task 1.5 from F test that tests the restriction that coefficients of beds and baths variables add to negative 25,000 against the alternative that the sum of these coefficients is unequal. So I'll refer actually to dis the discussion board. There's a, a partial solution on the discussion board which hints as to what we need to do. That uh, the student who asked that question that correctly sort of implemented the restrictions as we did in lecture one and substituted it into the regression model and got this on the first line and then as the second line sort of collected terms in beta one and basically got beta naught plus beta one times so a constant here plus beta one times beds minus baths so this will be a new variable then there is another term plus 25,000 times baths. There's no coefficient to estimate. We'll discuss in a second what we do with that. And then live area and age just as normal coefficient. So the student's question was, what do we do with this guy? Basically what we do is, uh, according to my answer, we move that onto the left hand side. Okay, so the dependent variable will then be S price plus 25,000 times baths. So that's what we want to do. So we get back to to this. So we have, since it's an F test, we need the unrestricted model. That's still our task one unrestricted model. And perhaps we'll actually call that task one five restricted model. So and what we have here is S price plus 25,000 times, let's check again what it was, 25,000 times baths. So that's our dependent variable. That's on the first spot. So EVs will recognize that as a dependent variable. 
then we have a constant and then we will have as explanatory variables beds minus baths, live area and age. So again in parentheses beds minus baths so we don't even have to create these var this variable if it is in parentheses eViews will recognize it as a new variable live area and age. So this is now our restricted model. Press OK and we'll get some sum of squared residuals from here. So I'll save that as well and we'll do the calculations later. So next task 1.6 test a restriction using auxiliary regression approach and the restriction is that beds and baths are irrelevant. So what we need is a re restricted regression model. We need to save the residuals from the restricted regression model and that's the model with live area and age only as explanatory variables. So we run this regression. Now we need to save these residuals. The way to do that is go to PROC, make residual series and let's call them resid for task 1.6. Okay, and we save these. Now what we need is an auxiliary regression which uses these as explanatory variables. All the explanatory variables that we had initially, live area and age, plus the two restricted variables, beds and baths. We open that as an equation. So here's our restricted model we estimate it. Um, yeah, we can delete that. So here is our auxiliary regression. It has the restricted residuals as dependent variable. Live area and age, they were in the restricted model, they need to be included as well and beds and baths as explanatory variables. So I'll just save that again and then we'll do calculations. So, and task 1.7 was similar. First we need to get residuals. Let's actually get it from here. No, we delete that. So, delete this equation. So, the restricted model is S price with um, beds and live area as explanatory variables. So, these are the variables that have not been restricted. Then we save the residuals, make residual series, I call them task 1.7. Okay, and now we run an auxiliary regression with these residuals against the unrestricted variables, which were beds and live area beds and live area and the restricted ones age and baths. So open equation, we run this and again I save this, save this output. So let's continue to task 2, task 2 1. So firstly we want to reconsider our unrestricted model. It's in task 1 but I'll create a new model. Let's delete all other equations. Delete this equation. Delete. Actually we can leave that here. That's the unrestricted one and we'll start again with the same. Okay so that was beds, baths, live area and age. So now the task is delete the variable with the largest p-value, then re-estimate the model without that variable, Re repeat the variable deletion process until no estimated coefficient has a p-value larger than 0 0.05. So let's see. If you look at this, the largest p-value is the baths variable. So we go to estimate and we delete the baths variable and estimate it and now we don't have any coefficient that has a p-value larger than 0.05 so this is the end of our 
procedure. So we'll call this task two two one. Okay, model task two one. So two use the final estimated model from task two one to produce a ninety nine percent prediction confidence interval for selling price of a house that has a living area of 2,000 square feet, two bedrooms, one bathroom and is 20 years old. So that means we, so we use this model and perhaps actually we'll, we'll save this again, we'll just re-estimate that model, we use a new estimation window. So what we are having here is S price, beds, live area and age. Beds, live area and age. So let's open that as an equation. So now we know that to to run these regressions that deliver the correct standard errors for prediction intervals, what we need to do is we need to deduct the conditional values from our explanatory variables. So we need to know we're basically running S price against beds, but not just beds, but beds minus the conditioned value of beds. So in our case, we are having two bedrooms, so beds minus two. Then live area, the conditioning value here is 2,000 square feet. We know live area, if you look at live area, um, it's measured in hundreds of feet, so 2,000 is really 20. 20 hundreds of square feet and then age it's 20 years old okay and the information on number of bathroom bathrooms we don't need because bathrooms doesn't appear as an explanatory variable in the final model of 2 1 so we estimate this okay so we get that we already know from the lecture that this is now our conditional value that constant and this is the uh, standard error for the average prediction. So we'll save this and then do calculations at the end. So for task 2.3, it's basically the same procedure. We are using the same model, just different conditioning variables and later a different level of confidence, but that will be done in the confidence intervals calculations so we're having how many bedrooms four bedrooms living area is 2000 sorry 3100 square feet so that's 31 and age is 30 years okay and that's going to be saved And last, 2.4, real estate agent has 10 houses, all five years old, two beds and bathrooms and living area of 1,500 square feet. So we just go here. So this is really just repetition. The fact that it's 10 houses will not matter now. It will matter for the calculation of the confidence interval. But at this stage, it doesn't matter. So we have two bedrooms, 1,500, so one five in our units, living area and age five years old. And again save and lastly task 1.5 uh, landlord has eight small houses seven years old so let's see seven years old one bed and one bathroom and 14,000 square feet so that's actually not that small but here we go, one, four, zero. And we shall 
safe.